If 2023 will be remembered as a year when India went to the region never explored, Chandrayaan-3 landed down in the lunar South Pole region. 2024, first day today, will be about India starting a new mission to solve what is among the oldest mysteries of the universe, black holes. The 260-ton rocket carries an advanced astronomy observatory meant to study black holes and neutron stars. With this, India has become the second country after the United States to have such a specialized observatory of this kind to study black holes. The PSLV rocket system has evolved as the most reliable and cost-effective one in the global scenario. The ExpoSat satellite cost around uh, 250 crores, which is approximately $30 million dollars. The NASA IXPE, which is on a similar mission since 2021, cost $188 million. Remember, India's is just $30 million. The Indian satellite is expected to last more than five years compared to the two-year lifespan of the NASA IXPE. Let me bring in my guest now. Pallav Bagla is a senior journalist. We have a Dr. Lizzie Abraham. Uh, Principal Investigator VSAT, Tarun Swaradeep is Director of Astronomy and Astrophysics at Raman Research Institute. And we also have Anapurna Subramanyam, Director of uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore. Uh, Palab, beginning with you today, first day, first show. Uh, you know, PSOLV journey begins in 1993. Uh, and, and it's about one history after another, after Chandrayaan and Aditya L1 mission by the Indian Space Department. Today was another day. Well, certainly a glorious beginning to 2024. A new year, a new day and a new mission successfully accomplished by ISRO. And like uh, I said, it is a hat trick by ISRO. These are days when hat tricks are being much talked about. So we had first Chandrayaan-3, a successful mission, then Aditya L1, a mission to study the sun, and now a mission to study black holes and neutron stars. So a celestial hat-trick of sorts by the Indian Space Research Organization, which brings cheer and joy for all Indians. It's a very special mission. It on, not only had a satellite, it is also carrying a mini uh, Interna Indian Space Station of sorts or an Indian Space Lab of sorts in the poem experiment which is being done. So a very unique mission accomplished successfully by the Indian Space Research Organization. And now we have lovely guests on the show. The ball is in the in the courts of all the scientists to give us unravel the truths and secrets of the universe. So in this unraveling uh that Ms. Subramaniam that we'll be seeing, uh, India's contribution in the space exploration, which has perhaps achieved another milestone after today. Would you say that because the, these are low cost as well in comparison to NASA, I did that comparison in terms of the money that is being spent, that's also significant uh, because it gives us more room to explore more in, in the outer space. Yeah, so India has been achieving consistently and also low-cost low missions. And low-cost as such, any mission is uh, being done from India. So it gives us more room, more space for more collaborations, more things can be done. And uh, uh, I think we are not cutting corners on anything and we are doing an excellent job because this, uh, missions are successful and we are uh, exploiting them to derive excellent science from all of these. Mm -hmm. We can take example of AstroSat, uh, which was launched eight years ago. We still in orbit, which is normal lifetime was five years. It has already completed eight years. Hmm. And now we have seen Ch Chandrayaan and then uh, Aditya is just about to enter the L1 orbit and now ExpoSat. So I think they're all uh, success stories. Yes, one success story after another, Dr. Abraham. Is it miracle of sorts that's happening? One day after another, 2023 has been phenomenal and uh, we enter 2024 on a very, very high note. Yeah, for us, it is kind of a dream come true moment. It's kind of miracle 
uh, it's a new year gift for us and uh, we it's a new year gift for the entire world entire world of women so we are celebrating the success yes uh, so tell us more i mean in the sense that what is the celebration like and uh, and and why do you think this is very very special because i was reading some uh, some uh, astrophysicists who said that today's launch was almost like a textbook launch what made today's launch a uh, very unexpected uh, yeah i think uh, 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 this is first of all a new year gift uh, and india 60th pslv mission and in this 60th pslv mission not only exposat nine other payloads are uh, flying high in space uh, in poem platform and this poem platform itself is something unique uh, where uh, we can like uh, uh, colleges like us other uh, startups and all can do some experimental uh, modules and launch our own uh satellites or our own payloads in space hmm so if we so, want to make, make this comparison between what india is on this march to achievements uh, tarun shoredeep uh, what would you say that in in terms of you know poem in particular what what do you think will be uh will be india's key achievement in telling the story which will be something that the 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 space exploration uh, explorators world over would be looking out for so uh, i would reiterate what uh, dr subramanian said uh, uh that you know it's it's very impressive that our space program has come to a point where as scientists we can dream of uh, you know uh, very path breaking uh, observatories that can take us uh, at par with what is done at frontiers of science and i won't talk too much about poem but you know raman research institute uh, is the institute which uh, you know conceived designed and built the uh, major uh, science payload polex uh, one of the two science payloads on uh, exposat and you know what to me is very impressive is we are now entering an era where scientists have learned how to deliver and isro has you know opened the doors for scientists to come and you know sort of realize their dream projects so yes. going forward i think this is uh, you know an era we are entering with aditya astrosat of course opened the door and you know each has been having its own history and you know we are slowly getting to the point where we are able to do this everything is coming together with science and technology at the institutes as well as isro being able to work together palo palo like scientific missions yes you know black holes have the highest gravitational force in the universe and neutron stars have the highest densities uh, why do you think gathering information has been so so uh, difficult and this exposat will have 5 years more life than nasa's ixpe which has life span of just 2 years uh, do you think that because it will be around for far you know 3 3 years longer than what nasa had option of it will be able to gather more information uh, so it's uh, it should be able to gather more information. information oh i'm sorry uh, pallav yes yes pallav bagla yes uh, india's exposat should be able to gather a lot more information uh, there are 50 celestial objects the indian scientists have identified which are neutron stars and black holes and the adjoining areas which they want to study so 5 years is a long time they will get an extended period to study and unravel some of these mysteries and secrets i would let the scientists on the show uh, like dr annapurni subramaniam to answer the questions of what secrets they would uh, reveal but let me come back to the point of poem which you were asking a poem is a very special part of the polar satellite launch vehicle usually the fourth stage of the polar satellite launch vehicle which is a four stage vehicle would have become space junk and would have burnt out in space after a while 
So there is certain stewardship which is being done by ISRO to reduce space junk and also to create wealth out of waste. So they've created a platform on which startups like the startup from uh, the women-led initiative from Thiruvananthapuram, of which we have a guest here, and also of startups from Bangalore and Hyderabad, whose experiments have been carried. So essentially, a low-cost, high-value space asset is being used to create a platform which is almost like a mini space station or a mini sky lab. Mm. So ISRO has been very frugal and is delivering big bang for the buck. Really, what would have become waste has now been converted into wealth by ISRO. So this mission is giving far more value than just being a launch of the ExpoSat. ExpoSat is a very exquisite satellite. Uh, it's very hard to make a polarimetric satellite. That is why only NASA has been able to do. And now a scientist from the Raman Research Institute and URSC have been able to do that. So it has taken 10 long years for the scientists to make this particular uh, uh, specialized satellite. It, it will give us great results. And I would let uh, Dr. Annapurni Subramaniam to answer what secrets they would reveal and how would we get better okay, so information on the end of life of stars. Okay. Dr. Subramaniam, please continue. Yeah. So um, I'll, before I start, I just wanted to add a few things on the POEM uh, platform. It's actually unique, which we actually for testing, because it is important to raise the TRL levels of the uh, uh, small uh, experiments people are building, including the startups. So how do you test it, whether it works? So you have to give for a short time, it can be in space and actually it can prove that it works or not. So in the previous mission, our own students made something and it was actually the star sensor, which was tested there. So it's an excellent platform for increasing the, uh, the readiness levels of the technology. So that is excellent uh, part of it. Now coming to the science, which will be done. So uh, the, 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 the most exotic and extreme objects in the universe, which are the remnants of, you know, when the star explodes, you will have the central implosion taking place and that will result in either neutron star or black holes. They're very, very dense systems. And this is actually taking the, uh, you know, the laws of nature to the extremes. So you, which you cannot see on the surface of the earth. So if you want to study things around them, we cannot see them directly. We have to infer through the radiation which is coming from the surrounding region. And this is very highly complex. And uh, x-rays are emitted only from the extreme uh, conditions. Like it can be extremely hot or uh, a strong magnetic field, etc. Now, probing these are indirect. There are no direct probes to it. So we used to, I mean, in, in AstroSat also, we have X-ray payloads which actually take images of it. But over and above, what you need to do is that if you want to probe the physics, then you need to know how exactly these X-rays are produced. So this is a very, the polarimetry, X-ray polarimetry is a very clever mechanism by which you can actually detect the incoming photon and interact it with the, uh, the detector. And the pattern of the radiation which you collect tells you whether the light coming light has a particular pattern of vibration. And if you, for an example, if you see the light coming from a bulb, it, it doesn't have the electric fields in the photon varies all in random directions. But when it gets scattered, the electric field has a particular direction. So it is, it has some information. Hmm. So the scientists are actually trying to identify the, the secret which is lying within the X-ray photons, which are coming from these exotic objects. So this is com it's something in the nutshell. If you okay. want to expand more, I can explain. You have explained it very well, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Lizzie Abram, uh, final words to you. Uh, you know, we have seen women-led missions. And now another, uh, and it gives me immense pleasure and I'm honored that I have two women on this panel who have played a crucial role. Uh, in, in this entire mission. So what was the moment like, Dr. Lizzie? Yeah, we are really excited and thrilled because being a only women engineering college, women-led team, we faced so much difficulties. It was too difficult to convince others because being an average engineering college, we want to convince others to get funding. Uh, so it was too difficult and we started this journey on the year 2018 and it is nearly five years and uh, 
uh, first year we have developed this idea and then this COVID pandemic affected and then again we have to restart everything and then uh, being an engineering college every year one batch of students uh, get passed out and then I have to groom another batch of students and it's kind of again uh, another difficult process and uh, sometimes it got stuck because of uh, manpower because of funds and all so now uh, on this new year when I look back uh, based on all the challenges I have faced I feel uh, quite overwhelmed and uh, Sometimes I am uh, too much emotional and now me and my students are really excited and thrilled and now I am on the way back to my home from Sri Harikota. Yes, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, yes. five years ago this journey began, uh, Dr. Abraham, and look what you have achieved. Many yes. who did not have faith in your dreams then, you know, continue to invest and look. Uh, so what next for you? Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, as I said, this is an experimental module like uh, for engineering colleges like us and startups like other startups. They can just try this. And, uh, but this is kind of a unique mission because we are measuring ultraviolet radiations in space uh, like the exposed measuring X-rays. And uh, AWACE is kind of self-powered uh, payload and uh, uh, out of all the payloads, we are the first one got the telemetry data. And uh, from uh, because AWACE is self-powered, uh, just after opening the uh, separation of the heat shield, we got the data just from uh, ha around 100 kilometer above. So from 100 kilometer to up to 650 kilometers throughout the transversal of the uh, rocket, we got the data, UV data, which is kind of unique. So. The next step is obviously uh, making a standalone satellite to uh, study the ultraviolet radiations and how it impacts um, uh, it's, uh, how it impacts climate changes and uh, warm weather conditions, particularly uh, tropical uh, states like ours. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Abraham and Dr. Subramaniam. Honor and pleasure to have you on this show. Palav Bagla, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Tarun Swaradeep, thank you for explaining this story and putting this in context for our viewers.